You know what folks don't like is change. I disagree. We've got uh, LOL This Music. We've got Much Better. We've got Ha Ha New Music. We have got This Music Is Not an Upgrade. And we have got Sweet New Music. Can we get genetically engineered non-pollinated trees? Those are called fake trees, Brian. I'm not talking about a Christmas well, tree. Well, real trees pollinate. Well, that's You're... what I'm saying. Can we get a genetically engineered unpollinating tree and from my well, front yard? The answer is no. Hold on. I was we... just asking. And I just answered. Well, we don't have to have a fight about it. I'm not just, fighting. How about you say maybe someday we could get that? Because that would be lying. Maybe they should make a genetically modified Brian that is not allergic to pollen. Bro, I'm all for it. <laughs> like, all I do is take drugs all day now. All I do is take drugs all day now. All I do is take drugs all day now. I wake up and I do nasal spray. Then I pop a, a Claritin. Mm -hmm. Then I drop shit in my eyes. None of this does me any good. It's fucking horrible. Maybe you should switch to meth. I am absolutely sick of Britt Baker and her crew. Now, there's a cage match on Wednesday. I was going to say, that's the point. They have to promote it. But this is go-away heat for me at this point. Well, you won't have to worry so, about it on Wednesday because there's going to be a cage. Hopefully, Thunder Rosa wins. They take Britt off TV for a while. They separate this crew. I'm done with it. That's the exact reaction that they are trying to get out well, of you, I don't want the to see, viewer. I don't want to see the cage match, though. Oh, well. If they announce we have canceled the cage match and taken Britt off TV, I would say, hooray. Wow, They've what been, a horrible person. They've gone oh. too far with it. Thunder Rosa makes the save in her club outfit. Her skirt with matching halter top. <laughs> like, why are you wearing this to a show, brother? You know you're going to run in at some point. QT may be my favorite guy on this entire show, actually. When he's mocking Keith Lee's pose, and he responds with a mighty double <laughs> chop to the chest, and QT does the timber bump to his back. That was the best thing in the show so far. He went in dead man's pose. Yes. Like T-Rex and then he, fell backwards. He fell like a tree. My summary of this match is kind of my summary of the whole show. It was good, but it could have been better. How would Brian's life be different if he was built like Vinny V? <laughs> He'd be bigger and stronger. Probably. Uh, I would bet I'm stronger than Vinny now. Oh, come on. What, do you want to have a bench off here on the show? Oh, arm please. wrestling. That will be so... Arm insane. wrestling? <laughs> well, that's not fair because he's got a bigger ulna. What did you call me? <laughs> Clothesline on Ricochet. 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 Just let him go. Ricochet. Jump. Is it Ricochet or Ricochet? <laughs> it's Rick Ricochet. He started training with HWA. He debuted in 2004. Itch. He wrestled with HWA for many years. He also spent time in the other... Itch Wrestling Association. <laughs> yeah. I got a little surprise for everybody. Is this Paul Sosnowski? No. Yes, it is. Oh, hey! You know who <laughs> I got in the line, everybody? I got the man who proposed on episode 14 of Monday Night Raw. How you doing, Paul? Let me answer the first question. Yes, please. We are not married. We oh. didn't get married. I called headquarters and I asked for Bruce Pritchard. What? Uh, about a, wow. about a month, about you can do that? <laughs> He's filming at this weird, awkward angle, and all we're seeing is a close up of Mr. Perfect's moose knuckle. And it's. Excuse me? That's all I can say, Brian. I, I don't know what else to call it. All right. Say it was say nope to dope. No hope right. with dope. Oh, no hope with dope. I like mine better. Say nope to dope. You know, some guy goes, I got some dope. You say, nope. No, nope. yeah, I understand, Brian. Yes. They're smoking guns that are riding high mm -hmm. on a show where I was told no, no dope. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck was the line? I watched it six times. Say nope to dope. <laughs> no, that's wrong, Craig. No, no hope with dope. No, whatever. <laughs> oh, Christ. I've never smoked dope, believe it or not. Whoever was in San Antonio that had the sign they're reading flour tortillas greater than corn tortillas. It definitely wasn't Ed. I agree. He looks like a corn tortilla eater if I ever saw one. <laughs> we had a video of Chris Statlander where she took out her wacky contact and wiped off her makeup. I know she's not really an alien. Like, the gimmick is not that she's fucking from no. Andromeda. No, I mean, she... they say that, but like, I think it's time that she just drops the gimmick and just goes and beats some ass. Thanks, Tony, again for everything he's done for him in the past. Thanks, Jim Ross. You've done as much for me, he says, as Tony has. Man in the mask, you've done nothing for me. <laughs> Man, back in the day, if we could have the Regal from, like, 20 years ago, when he was sober, 
against uh, Danhausen in a match. <laughs> God damn, that would have been the best feud ever. He hauls off, Regal does, and he smacks the holy hell out of Wheeler Yuta in the head. And Yuta gets in his face, and there's smiling Brian. Don't worry, Mr. Regal, I'll murder him for you. Yuta leaves with his friends. Mox Kind of left with his friends. Now he's a man without an island. Is that the term? No. <laughs> Well, he ain't got no island right now. You can hire the best there is, the best manager in the world. He'll still be the second best tag team in AEW. Dude, I love these guys dropping their little hints. They're brilliant. I mean... I mean, it's not subtle. His fucking gimmick is he is a sports entertainer in AEW. In a pro wrestling promotion. Bro, there are a million things that you can do with this gimmick. Like, I'm not even exaggerating. I think I think if you sat down and wrote everything, remember his list of holes, a thousand and two holes or whatever? Uh I'm pretty sure you could get a million things you could do with the gimmick of being a sports entertainer. I mean, they need to fucking beat some guy down and Jericho needs to be screaming to the cameraman to fucking zoom and cut. So Jericho talks about how he met them. He got a call from his former best friend, Kevin. Daddy Magic, Matt Bernard, and Cool Hand Ange. Angelo Parker. You know what he should have done is he should have changed all their names to like, uh, you know, Matt Lee is now Lee Matthews. Yes. And Jeff Parker is now Parker, Parker Jeffries. Jeffries. Yeah. Oh, man. Yes, everyone. Eventually, this Jericho faction and this Regal faction are going to collide. It's obvious. Jeff Hardy tagged in. Oh, my God. People were into this. Most of all, Tony Schiavone. He's almost giggling as he says, I bet we're going to see a cent on. It was a stunt show. But it never felt like a stunt show. It felt like a war in which they did a bunch of stunt things. I thought it was very clever the way they teased that people were going to run in when that door opened up for Aubrey to come in. And they made it very clear, the door is open. I see. And then they shut it because the fucking, it's a cage match. Nobody in, nobody out. They didn't kill the goddamn stipulation. Excellent main event. I thought this show was awesome. Pour myself a drink. Sat down. Miz came out. Pour myself another drink. Wendy drinking orange soda. Dakota wants to forfeit. Wendy says we can do it. Dakota convinced. Toxic Attraction can't find their titles. Dakota upset they interfered. They did it because they can. Toxic Attraction agrees to split up and find Cora Jade. Wendy and Dakota deem them hot but weird. You know, this was Vinny as opposed to being a kid versus Kushida. This was merely Kushida versus a kid. (laughs) I see what you did there. Uh, I haven't seen Dominic in a long time. He's not a very good promo, and he has giant Gonzalez's haircut. I know there's comic book fans out there, but I'm telling you as a 46-year-old fucking guy, this is shit. This is absolute bullshit that a pro wrestler has a magic fucking amulet that allows him to transform and be strong with it on and weak with it off. This is bullshit. It fucking sucks. I liked it. I was uh, bored out of my mind and uh, spent time... Listen, I was was not bored out of my mind, but Ciampa did talk longer than he needed to. I was far more entertained that a basketball but got stuck very high in the backboard in one of the games we're playing tonight, and the cheerleaders had to come save it. The commentators were like, man, can you imagine the butterflies Ravel Mendoza must have facing Dominic Mysterio? (laughs) (laughs) Like, no, actually, I can't. He's been wrestling since Dominic was nine. I'm sure he's fine. Cora Jade finds Mandy's new Range Rover. Do you know how I know this? Because Cora Jade walked out and said, Ah, it's Mandy's new Range Rover. Mandy's hiding in the back seat because Cora Jade is a dumb baby face. She's an evil thief <laughs> who got what was coming to her. I guess you're right. Am I wrong? I guess you're right. She stole three belts and a fucking brand new Range Rover. If it was a good match. It's funny watching LA because he's such a throwback. Because he's trying to wrestle exactly like The Rock. (laughs) There's like FTR is a throwback, but there's a charm to it. Like they're bringing back the best stuff of the past. LA Knight is just a rock tribute act. With the exception of the Cora Jade stuff, which is just mind-bogglingly dumb. And uh, the Sarai thing... And the, it's actually most of the show. <laughs> there, were, there were three good matches. There were three good matches. Uh, Dominic hey, listen, was good. On NXT 2.0, we'd have three good matches. That is a rarity. That is a good show. 